four. So Ronnie Neal won't be taking anything for granted this evening. I think uh, it would be unwise for him to take advantage of any, anything in a match like this. He's still only a best of seven frame match. So, got to be on your your toes and Judd sort of struggled to get home, but in the end he did earlier on. It's been a bit of a mixed bag for O'Sullivan, hasn't it? I mean, I said earlier on this first match he didn't look very comfortable out there with his and his elbow. He played superbly yesterday and not quite to that level today, has to be said. But you end up winning against a very promising player. And I think, as I said earlier, a lot of the the opposition from the lower reaches of the rankings, young or old, a little bit intimidated by O'Sullivan. I don't think Jang Ander fits that bill. shot to start nicely controlled wasn't it he's played very well to get this far as mentioned in fact it's been pretty serene progress for Zhang only dropped a couple of frames beat Ben Mertens the talented young Belgian 4-0 Anthony McGill four frames to one and then Elliot Slesser who had knocked out Jack Lazowski by the same score so he's here very much on merit Mentioned to Alan earlier today that he's pleased with the way he's queuing. Currently ranked at 57. Eight. He's only ever been as high as 55. Turn pro originally back in 2009 and managed to qualify for the Crucible in his debut season, which puts him in a pretty exclusive club. He very nearly stunned Stephen Hendry in the first round at the Crucible. He was two up with three to play before Hendry turned it around. But very capable player, clearly. He's played there at the Crucible three times, actually. And he's yet to win one of those uh, first-round best-of-19 frame matches. But, you know, it's a good effort to get there that many occasions. So you, you're right about his ranking. 70. Kind of a bit in and out, so that's why he's never got higher than that. Tough game for him against O'Sullivan, of course. And he needs this very good start. Can get a little bit bogged down in matches. A really poor shot, actually, that last one. 24. So much room on the right side to uh, play down that way and get on the red to the left corner, or even over screwing on something to the right corner. It's been a nothing shot he's played. Bidding to match his best ranking performance. He has been in three quarterfinals, most recently last year's Welsh Open. When he was actually three up with four to play against Hossein Vafai and lost in a decider. 25. Nice recovery. Packed house throughout the day once again here in Brentwood. The winner of this match will play Winner of the Ali Carter Zhou Yu Long two. match this evening. John Higgins already through with that terrific display of break building earlier. As mentioned, the top break so far, 145. He also knocked in a 132. 33. And a couple of other sizable breaks. So Higgins is in good form. He plays either Martin O'Donnell or Hei <laughs> Guajang. Yeah, I think the Higgins uh, win was the performance of the week. It would be hard to find one better. All those breaks you mentioned. And uh, the irony is, of course, in oh. Shanghai it was O'Sullivan. British Open last week in Cheltenham, Williams. If it was to be Higgins this week, the class of 92. Um, just go on and on, basically. He hasn't won yet, but he's playing as well as anybody, Higgins. Oh, 
what do you want? Good start. He's on reds and blacks. I don't know if he'll be kicking the, any further into it than that. Very early stages, but uh, he's going to play on this bottom red. It will be with the black again, so that he's moving well. But uh, playing on Sullivan, I don't think you're right about possibility of one four seven breaks, especially this early in the piece. Bang under forty eight. Well, that never threatened the pocket. That was no, that wasn't even close enough for it to stay over the hole, which was what usually would happen if you miss those. Sullivan was virtually perfect against Jackson Page. He made the three centuries, but it wasn't just that. He barely missed a ball in live play, and his long potting was excellent. Today was quite a come down from that level, but what he was able to do was pot the key balls at the key moments. And that's why he was able to beat C4-2, who, on the balance of play, you could have said was at least as good as O'Sullivan, but didn't quite have the same ability to be clinical when it mattered as often. Don't know if there's two reds to the left middle that are close to a plant. Yeah. He looked at Jason, and I know that uh, Zhang Anna hadn't really given them a second thought. If they're on, it's a bad misjudgment by him. One. Yeah. I mean, that's just really poor, isn't it, to play a containing safety shot and not have a, the first clue there was a plant dead set. So that is a very poor thing to, uh, to do. It's something you... Uh, coach would tell you off for, I think. Anyone can miss a ball. No one can be criticised for that, but Eight. poor observation of what there is in the shot you're leaving is, uh, is your own fault. It didn't cost him Eight. on this occasion. better than the last 32 for Zhang last season. He made that round at the Scottish Open and the German Masters. He did win a couple of rounds in World Championship qualifying, including a victory over Zhao Gadong before losing very narrowly to Nopon Sankam in a decider. But he has qualified for the upcoming Wuhan Open and the International Championships, the return of ranking event snooker to China this season, of course. O'Sullivan has already won the Invitational Shanghai Masters for a fifth time and a fourth in a row, beating Luca Brussel in the final a couple of weeks ago. But O'Sullivan didn't get past the quarterfinals of a ranking event last season. His most recent success was his record equaling seventh world title. Going for number 40 this week in a second English Open after he won this title in 2017.
This is quite a while for Sullivan to be deliberating over a shot. Playing a containing shot in the end. Good queuing from O'Sullivan. Still plenty of reds there for him to get right back into this frame. He pinched a couple from some way behind this afternoon and that made the difference really. Made a clearance in the second frame which Sijai Wee looks set to win. And then did so again on his way to his 4-2 victory. shot than it looked, you know, very cleanly potted to the oh. middle. So he's given himself a chance to get back into this frame. That uh, 48 points advantage that uh, Zhang Ander has from that uh, six red, six blacks. 13. Fairly slender looking now, isn't it? It doesn't mean a great deal in the grand scheme of this frame where the balls are. Oh, that's OK. 20. Twenty-one. Said earlier on, I think it's great when uh, an audience comes in to watch these great players live. It's a very different experience to watching on TV. As we love, it's a TV sport in so many ways. You know, and it's terrific on TV. Snooker is it's what basically made snooker colour TV. But just the chance to see someone like O'Sullivan close up, it's uh, you can see all of it. Twenty-nine. The way that he operates, the cue action. The, Dance, just the way he is around the table. Now it's a treat for these people of Essex and no doubt beyond where they've come from to watch him. And all the other players, of course, but I think it's safe to say O'Sullivan is the 36. focal point this evening. 37. As he has been for a good few years. Anyway, this frame is probably will revolve around that top left and red. And the question for how he tackles is because the red actually 43. is a, maybe a little further away from the cushion than the one he would like because he could cannon it more Four comfortably if he's closer to the cushion. Plenty of room to go round it where it is. So what is the plan here? Screw the keyboard to the left cushion and play on it in the middle. That's got to be with precision. He's played to the cushion. He's got a shot down the, oh, yeah. the bottom pocket. And this would probably win in the frame if this goes in. Oh, Very well done, I think, this. Just the way he approached all that made it all look simple. Shades of John Higgins about Ronnie O'Sullivan today. The way in which he's overturned deficits in frames in important moments. 55. Doing it again here. Zhang had the chance. Missed the red along the top rail into the left corner. 
Yeah, Sullivan has taken these very well. The initial red wasn't easy into the... 58. Right centre pocket. He was close to the side cushion. But in a couple of shots, he was in prime position. 62. Frame is one. Doesn't be... Doesn't appear to be much wrong with his game, does there? He's not played a lot of snooker. This season, 67. of course, he missed the first three ranking events. And he looked sharp. 73. His top break earlier today was 78 to finish his match with C. Jai Wee. 80 in the frame. Ronnie O'Sullivan. And he's cleared the table with 80. That was very impressive from Ronnie O'Sullivan. An early blow for Zhang Ander, who was in charge of that frame, but didn't get enough to win it and has paid the price. O'Sullivan, 1-0. Ronnie and while we wait for frame two to get underway, let's hear more from the Rocket about his frame of mind. Fascinating insights into the mind of the greatest player of all time, who's made a good start here with an 80 break to win the opening frame. Okay. Every seat Thank taken once again frame. here in the Brentwood Centre as we reach break. the sharp end of the first Home Nations event of the new snooker season. Quarterfinal places at stake tonight. And Ronnie O'Sullivan has made an important blow in the opening frame with an 80 clearance after Zhang Ander got in with 48. Mr. Red along the rail. And O'Sullivan crafting a fine response to take the opener. This is their fourth meeting. O'Sullivan's won the previous three. Luca Brussel has taken the opening frame against Ding Zhong Wei. Brussel, who does have the opportunity to replace O'Sullivan as the world number one this weekend. He's got a win tonight, for starters. But obviously, the longer O'Sullivan stays in, the harder that'll be for Brussel.
I think it's going to be tough for Luca Purcell to, to get to number one for any period of time. Um, not because he's not good enough and he, he's got all those world championship points, but he will lose at the UK the points he got for the final two years ago. So unless he comes out and wins that or repeats the dose, gets to the final, you know, there's a lot of points coming off, but not, not so many that he's in any problem. Of course, he's got a world title. It's just that for the number one status, it changes ever-changing really isn't it with the, the two-year rolling system if he doesn't get to number one soon he might not be able to do it in the near future a great ambition for so many players any uh, select band that have ever been world number one Well, that is a very good pot. Not easy. I think the camera angle we had it showed you exactly the line of it. It was dead straight and, like you say, a queuing shot. Six. Martin O'Donnell, who scored that impressive win over Mark Selby, started this week and followed it up with victory over former UK champ Stephen Maguire is currently 3-2 up on the former world under 18 champion Aikoi Jang who qualified for the tour this year via the Asia Oceania Q school yeah, it's not happening in a hurry that match is it they played well they've literally well. just played five frames just started the sixth frame and it's been two hours 45 minutes when when they've got on the table winner of that to play John Higgins who is already through 4-1 tremendous performance 13. from the wizard a couple of centuries including 145 that'll take some beating yeah I think you're talking maximum aren't you huh? I know 146s are quite rare we had some at the world championships a couple but I think someone's going to have to play the perfect frame to deprive John of the uh, High break price. Meanwhile, for a man who's one nil down, he's actually hitting the ball well, Zhang Ander. Twenty one. Twenty nine.
34. Forty two. Whether it's briefly or longer than that, Yang Ando has silenced this crowd with uh, this break as he did in the first, although he never won the frame from it, 48. I think occasionally it starts to get a bit ponderous. He, he started that last frame really well, then he started looking at a lot of shots, end up missing that red by a long way. That's sort of a bit ponderous as to whether to play it. When he plays a little Quicker with more rhythm, he seems to be a better player. He starts looking at all the things that can go wrong. And invariably, when you do that, they will. Second. However, this is a good break again. Just Ben Williams needs a little bit of time here because he's there's no available spot. He's got to go below its spot in the line down the centre. He's a resilient character, Zhang. He first turned pro when he won the Asian yeah. Under 21 title in 2009, but he's been off the tour three times and got himself back on again. Most recently, two years ago. 50. And after the disappointment of losing the first frame from that healthy lead that he'd built before missing the red into this left corner, this has been a really good response. The initial red was certainly missable into the centre pocket. He's cued well so far, but of course he's conscious of the dangers of a repeat performance from frame one. He's got to get the job done this time. Once again, he's not sure what to play, whether he goes into the reds or not. So. He didn't have any choice, really, and it's a beautiful shot. Now, I think he looked at the scores as if, seven. can he possibly win the frame without these reds being opened? And he played a delightful shot, and there was not one person in the crowd clapped him. So I think we know where their uh, emotions lie, and it's not with Zhang Ander. Nothing personal, it's just their massive O'Sullivan fans. <laughs> that was a lovely shot he played. Sixty five. Sixty six. smattering there. Been a lovely break, like I say, and uh, he's won in the frame this time, whereas in the first frame, he got so far and then Sullivan came back strongly, but this has been excellent. If he can make a century here, he'll match his tally for the entire last season, which is indicative of how well he's been playing 73. of late. Would be his ninth of the campaign already. Most importantly, though, he's won the frame, and he's done it in style. Exactly what he needed.
As mentioned, the last time they played, 80. he did take O'Sullivan the distance, won back-to-back -back frames from 4-2 down before O'Sullivan beat him in the last of the European Masters. So he knows he can compete with O'Sullivan. Well, that red will only go with a lot of side, I think. Even then, it may not be able to. Going under 80, and the frame. So, a nice break there. He to win the frame comfortably. Really good stuff from Zhang Ander, matching Ronnie O'Sullivan's break in the opening frame. No century, but an 80 will do well enough. And it's one frame apiece here in Brentwood. It's already been a really good match. Two outstanding breaks from both players. Zhang getting in early in the first frame. That was a nicely controlled shot with the rest, perfectly on the black. And he was going nicely until this moment. You've got to be absolutely bang on with these. But in truth, he didn't get close this time. He caught the cushion long before the pocket, didn't he? And he's missed two balls in, in live play. That was one of them. But uh, Sullivan did well to win it. I thought he, the green he knocked to the left middle was to follow that was a really crisp shot. So that's kind of the, the way the frame went. Then he played a nice little cannon here. Well, you know where you are. He's in a position to, and went on to, win the frame after this shot. It's kind of how frame one panned out. The most recent frame we've seen was just all about Zhang Ander, this lovely red to middle, and uh, some nice queuing shots thereafter. Take the opening red again. Off school, getting a, any clapping out of some of these uh, very... Big snooker fans, I might add. This was a beautiful shot. That was going to win him the frame straight away. So, an enjoyable match, one each. This was the red to the middle. He ended up playing a double to try and make the century. I don't think he'd be overly concerned. We've got a game on our hands here. A heavyweight encounter on table two at the moment. The world champion, Luca Brassell, taking on the three times UK champion and last season's UK runner-up, Ding Zhongwei, who's just missed that black, which won't thrill him, particularly given that he's 2-0 behind. Just 34 in front in this one, which feels like a must-win frame. Well, of course, they played only last week in Cheltenham, didn't they? And uh, Ding Zhongwei led 3-0. Brassell come back to 3-all, and Ding won the decider. So, chance of uh, quick revenge for Brassell there. And Ricky Walden, a three times ranking titleist, hoping to set up a showdown with Judd Trump after his victory earlier against Juan Sijun. And going well at the moment, 3-2 up against Matt Sell, who was very impressive last night in coming from 2-0 behind against Mark Allen to win. Scored heavily, the former Indian Open champion, but Walden in the ascendancy at the moment. It's on Discovery Plus, of course. pair of 80 breaks, one from Ronnie O'Sullivan, one from Zhang Ander, and so one frame apiece in a bid to get to the quarterfinals of the English Open. O'Sullivan hoping for a second English Open title. We'll add to the one he won six years ago now. The winner to play the Ali Carter or Zhou Yulong, who might be going onto the table pretty late this evening. They're on table four. And the match uh, preceding them, as Neil mentioned, is proving to be a long one.
It was a good safety from O'Sullivan and it's created the error. Does anything go? Judging by the shake of the head from O'Sullivan, maybe not. Certainly nothing easy. Looks like the pink's in the way of the obvious red. Continue the break. There was a bit of distance between those reds, so he had to hit it bang on, which he did. Yang Ande may have thought that he got away with that one, but no dice. Five. Six. Eight. Fourteen. Well, it's always going to be a bit of a puzzle with the black completely locked out of the frame, as it appears to be. Well, it is. It appear to be. Fifteen. Not that he he can't get it going here, O'Sullivan. He could possibly develop it, but he's probably happy to just chip away at what's there. He'd be taking a risk trying to get high-value colours into play when you've got three 20. or four more reds and high-value colours in the locker. Twenty-one. No, that wasn't planned. Tried to screw back past that. Oh, I've got some work on that. Oh, that it now. 26. But it's increasingly difficult with the limitations of, uh, sort of certain colours being out of the game. The pink's not really in play either, is it, as you can see? No, he is. Hamstrung by all of that. 27. I think that's probably end of break. <laughs> Therein lies the problem. The greatest break bill of all time can't operate with uh, certain balls out of play. Now Sullivan, 27. Rather ugly looking table at the moment with both pink and black awkward.
an absolute screamer, isn't it? A long pot, terrific. When he first turned professional, I mean, I, I first saw when he played age 12, and he was a very good player back then as a, a junior. But when he first turned professional, age 16, he was a brilliant Five. player, actually. He won all those qualifiers for about three months up in the Norbrook Castle in Blackpool. But Six. his long game was incredible, actually. That was his, that was his asset then. The amount of times he would pop blues from the spot into the bolt pockets to recover a break. All the rest of it didn't come immediately, the cue ball control. Every time he knocks in one of those, it just takes me back to when he first Eleven. appeared. 16-year-old beating almost everybody in qualifiers. Ronnie Sullivan, Northwood. 11. Shot there, playing with the opposite hand. Yes, his long game against Jackson Page in particular was outstanding. But even for O'Sullivan, this table is a challenging one given the position of the high value colours at the moment. <laughs> Equally for Zhang Ander, at the moment it's a long way back into this frame, given that he's already 38 adrift and very difficult to launch an effective counter-attack given the way things stand Very tight third frame ongoing on table two between Ding Zhengui and Luca Brasella. Must win, you would think, for Ding, given he's 2-0 behind to a couple of 52 breaks from the world champion. There's one red left in that frame, but Ding is at the table, so he's got the chance to halve the deficit. The winner of that will play either... Lou Hong Yu, who edged out Chris Wakelin, the shootout champion earlier, or Mark Williams, who's still going strong after his British Open triumph last week. Yes, Mark Williams says him to think that uh, early on in, in interview said that he felt he hasn't got much left in the tank. He said he was uh, running on adrenaline in the start of the week and fumes at the moment. Well, I think. Uh, one of those situations is we see an excellent long pot from O'Sullivan. If Williams could just get through tonight and a good night's sleep, then uh, maybe he'd be OK again tomorrow, but maybe just uh, he's feeling the exertions of the last week and a half. Seven. Very un O'Sullivan like frame this. He's having to do it in bits and pieces, but it's going very well with that in mind Daniel at the moment. Sullivan, seven. Just caught that red too thick, which is why it stayed on the lip of the pocket. Well, that could be a moment, couldn't it? Because now Zhang Ander, who is playing well, is uh, in with something to go at. Ronnie O'Sullivan was over 100, was, was at 100%. One. About up until about five minutes ago on pot success. He's missed two since then. But he wouldn't normally. Ding Zhongwei has managed to win that all-important third frame, so Luca Brussel's lead shaved to 2-1 on table two. Very tight six frame underway between Ricky Walden and Matt Selt, with Walden leading 3-2 as well. Selt is currently 16 behind in that frame, with just the one red left. All of the matches available on Discovery Seven. Plus.
quarterfinals tomorrow, of course, starting at the earlier time of 12 o'clock UK time, because they're the best of nine frames. So there'll be three matches on table one, one in the evening on table Eight. two as well. There's pink 14. on the black spot suits him for now. Clearly, if this comeback is going to be complete and he's going to get the frame one, there's a lot of work to be done with the two reds to the right of the black, which seem not to be a plant to that pocket. You could move something here. 50. Well, he certainly could have shifted the red, but I suppose he's thinking that there's no color available. They're not dead in line for a plant. Seeing it from there, though, they might be makeable into a plant. First thing you look at is the gap between the reds, about a couple of two or three centimeters. Maybe you could just turn it into a set to that right corner. Earlier on in this frame, O'Sullivan pushed that green into a safe spot that could come into play. Twenty-eight. Go on, Ronnie. Yeah, it was an interesting one, wasn't it? Because as you saw, they, they weren't set as a plant. But he felt that he could turn it into one, and he probably could have done with hitting a lot less of the first red on that right side from his angle. Then it could have been gettable. He uh, was a bit fortunate not to leave the red. This frame is still up for grabs. Talked to Alan McManus earlier in the week about possibly replacing his tip in the very near future, O'Sullivan. <coughs> Been working pretty well for him so far this week. He hasn't always played at his best, but he's looked sharp. He's certainly looked very focused. Very obviously dialed in this week. Well. And that was another bit of sweet queuing as he edges his way towards the winning line. It's been a bit of a battle, this frame, given the position of the balls. Eighteen the lead, twenty-five with the black, so you'd need the red and another colour to go two one up. 
Eight. And the red will not be easy. Manuel Sullivan, eight. Yes, it uh, wasn't a straightforward shot. You, you feel that uh, while he hasn't won this frame yet with the chances he's had, O'Sullivan, is there going to be a twist in the tail? But like you also pointed out, the green put safe a lot earlier could still be the saviour for him if there is anything that Jaganda comes back with. Sullivan chip this red in if he can almost certainly he'll be on frame ball color not to be yeah, knuckle might have just forced the snooker or what maybe just a thin edge of the red sticking out Ben Williams has had a look down the line so he's doing all the measurements for possibly Placing a ball, if there is a miss called, yeah, he can't get anywhere near to it directly, as you see. Blue's completely in the way. Around two cushions. I mean, while you see players good at this shot, you can never be sure you're not going to hit the red incorrectly and, and leave something on. It's a little bit in the balance, these shots. I'll tell you what, he didn't want that one back. It's, uh, he, he hit it well, so he deserves something, but the snooker was not something he could have played. Looked like a slash, but I think what happened there was the middle pocket was in the way of the natural angle, so he screwed it to widen the angle. Now the blue's gone safe, so that's again in O'Sullivan's favour. Going the distance in the match between Ricky Walden and Matt Selt, who's managed to win frame six to force the decider. Win of that to play Judd Trump after his 4-2 win. First up this evening against Juan Sijun. Seems like he can't look, doesn't want to see what's happening. Maybe he's finding it all a little bit weary. So he's been uh, second match of the day. Same for just about everybody, but there you are. Doesn't make it uh, any easier. I mean, I feel a little bit sorry for the players still to go on tonight. Mark Williams' match and Ali Carter's match are the two that are waiting for matches to finish. And they're not finishing any time yet. Walden Selt match, and of course the uh, match, which is very intriguing actually on the other table, is he, Ye Ching, and uh, Martin O'Donnell. That's still, I mean, they've got a bit of mileage left in it. And O'Donnell Bring might be enough. in position to win it 4-2, but what are we now? 20 past 10. A lot of players waiting in the wings. Yeah. We could be burning the midnight oil before the quarter-final lineup is complete. Looks as though O'Sullivan can get through to this green. It's felt as though he's been a very heavy favourite throughout this frame. He's been in front throughout. He's had to get the points on the board in dribs and drabs because of the awkwardness of the balls. But Shane clearly still has a chance. The blue is safe. 
16 the difference, so as things stand, O'Sullivan needs green and brown, but that's a good shot acknowledged by O'Sullivan from Zhang to snooker in full ball behind the brown. Yeah, he's playing some really good shots, Zhang and a lot that previous, which is certainly just making O'Sullivan a bit frustrated, I think. He's doing nothing wrong, he's playing good match play. Gun barrel straight. Couldn't do a lot with the cue ball. But he's hanging on in there in this frame, Shank. He's got a good temperament. And that's another cracker. Well, he's nine in it now, so Sullivan just wants one pot from here. Young Anna needs them all, but he's played a pretty tough old frame. Young Anna, sir. Nine the lead. Oh, that's beautifully struck. And as Neil says, it's all he needed. So he's had to work extremely hard in this 25 minute frame, Ronnie O'Sullivan, but another excellent long pot, which really has been the theme of the week from him. Five. Why, why wouldn't he just go for that uh, pink there? I mean, I just don't really understand it. Unless he thought that somewhere he would, I don't know, knock the black in or something. It's just mystifying how he can not just roll the pink in or over a pocket there. For me, anyway. It's very hard to get a snooker on the pink and black anyway, especially when you knock it safe, <laughs> as he's done there. A lot harder now. Obviously, just ensuring no in-offs. I and mean, that is the first thing you learn when you play this game. Your opponent needs snookers. Stop the cue ball from going anywhere near a, a pocket. Doesn't mean it never happens. In the frame, Ronnie O'Sullivan. No messing this time. Ronnie O'Sullivan pops the pink and clinches the frame. A hard-earned frame, but he's well, come through possible, it. Please, and has still games in retaking progress. the lead here in Brentwood to lead by two frames to one. Time for another Ronnie recreation, and this time it's a shot played in his 2018 Quietly, second please. round match with Thank Ali you. Carter at the World Championship.
That was a memorable match in more ways than one. There was a bit of argy-bargy, wasn't there, between the captain and the rocket that night, and Carter won. And, of course, they could play again tomorrow in the quarterfinals, but there's a lot of snooker to be played before we know that that's going to happen. Meanwhile, Ding Xunhui has missed that pink, which he is furious about, because he's not won the frame yet. There's 35 left. Yeah, a few times tonight I've looked over and I've noticed that he's been more than a little bit animated and often you don't get a read off of Ding Junhui, do you? He's normally uh, pretty quiet about things, but he's fuming there. Didn't get close, did he? OK, Ronnie. Ronnie O'Sullivan back in front, two Fourth frames frame. to one. Ronnie O'Sullivan to break. Zhang and are bidding for a fourth ranking quarter final appearance. Ronnie O'Sullivan, a 138th. 2 1 up, halfway there. Had to really grind it out in the previous frame because the balls you keep your voices from the down, please. were very awkward. Martin O'Donnell, meanwhile, has come through a really tough battle this evening. The man they call the Minister of Defence. He's having a great week, isn't he? He's beaten Mark Selby. Stephen Maguire, and now he's taken out the talented newbie to the professional tour, Hei Gui Zhang, by four frames to two. So he will play John Higgins in the last eight tomorrow. And that frees up table four for Carter and Zhou Yulong. One. Can you stand still, please? Stand still. I'm happy, O'Sullivan, with some movement. Ball. He's more the stewarding, perhaps. He's not happy with people are always going to wander in and out. The snooker venue, if, if they're allowed to do so. Only also the concentration is not there. He's, uh, these days, he does let it get to him a little bit. All of that some movement. It's never any good when it happens. But like I said earlier, it's the uh, a lot of people want to see him play, and you know they don't want people to have to go out for refreshment or for a bathroom break and come back. They don't want to miss a frame of it. Uh, it can be a little off-putting. Tough balance because we're celebrating what tremendous crowds we've got this week. We watch all of the snooker here in Brentwood. Really still irked by the background movement, O'Sullivan. But it doesn't seem to be affecting his level of play, albeit he did miss that red just now. He's not amused. Like I say, is he annoyed with the spectators or is it that he feels that someone should be stopping them or sort of uh, managing the uh -oh. coming in and out? You know, that's um, that's my point. I don't know which one it is. I think the spectators were just desperate to see the game. Don't know. But it's rattled him now, I think. Sponsor of walk, says O'Sullivan. Well, at least he can smile about it. Certainly, Ben Williams is. 
Well, I'll tell you, he does sometimes sound a bit like Ray Reardon, his, his great mentor, one of the great men of snooker, who equally would not have stood for things like this that put him off. I mean, Ray was a great man of snooker, but he used to fight his corner against, if he thought a referee had made a mistake or something in the crowd had upset him, he, he wasn't afraid to make his feelings known. And there's still a match to be won here. Zhang Ander has played well enough to suggest that he can still be a threat in this match. He's 2-1 behind, but this is a chance to get back in. One good red here, and he could be in business. The table looks good. One. And that is a good red. So, a very presentable opportunity for the underdog here to build a lead at least in this fourth frame and stay in touch. Fourteen. Fifteen. That's a pretty crucial red that he's got rid of, which, as you can plainly see, has opened up everything. He's played well tonight, hasn't he, Jang? He's 2-1 he's down, but not dissimilar to the match with C. Jawi that Ronnie won. C did most of the playing early, and... 22. Win all the frames, despite it. 23. Played especially well in beating Anthony McGill. May break some 127, 73 and 91 to clinch a 4-1 victory. I mean, it's a good result, isn't it, to him, McGill? There's no doubt about that. And as you say, did it comprehensively. Thirty-one. Thirty nine. Forty six. Fifty four. Yeah. 
Sixty one. Sixty two. Sixty-seven. Sixty-eight. It's going to be two each by the looks of things. Sixty-four. The difference, only fifty-nine left. And Zhang Ander again, looking very composed mentioned those breaks he made in beating Anthony McGill. He did something very similar to Elliot Slesser, who'd previously 75. knocked out Lazowski, made three frame-winning breaks in a 4-1 win over Slesser, who's twice beaten Ronnie O'Sullivan. So he is playing some terrific stuff right now. He seems to be enjoying the challenge of playing the seven times 76. champion. Perhaps encouraged by how close he ran him when they last played last year at the European Masters. Sullivan, well, he's shown some frustration about movement in the crowd. He must be a little concerned about how well his opponent's playing. Well, that's it, isn't it? It is a combination and, uh, of the two things, really. He's frustrated when he's at the table because his movement... In it, well, he says that anyway. I'm sure he's right, but he's not dealing with it very well, to be honest. And uh, Zhang Ander, he's unfazed by anything. He's playing beautifully. So, goes into the mix and this game is going to be a tough one for Sullivan to win. Eighty-nine. He made eighty in the second frame to level the match. And he now go on to complete his ninth century of this season already. He made nine in the whole of last. Ninety. With the red, he deserved a century, but once again, 97 will be more than enough to very much stay in contention with Ronnie O'Sullivan, who looks a bit fed up. He's been pegged back to two frames all. It's a high quality match. We've had some sizable breaks, and a couple of them have come from Zhang Ander, who is clearly, Neil, not phased by the challenge this evening. No, I mean, you, we were just saying during the frame that, that some of the results he's had have been impressive, and he's done it with big breaks. Yeah, he's, he's playing somewhere near his very best. Now, you'd still say O'Sullivan is likely to win, but. It maybe wouldn't be quite as sure as perhaps at the start of the match. Now it's only a best of three. Sullivan, you know, he can channel that annoyance in some ways to his to his benefit. But uh, Yang is very close to winning this frame. Ronnie probably the good blue to do so. But in frame four, which we've just seen, see the few highlights of it next. It's all one more traffic. All about Yang. We are. This was the O'Sullivan start, and he got he got distracted, didn't he, by the crowd? Let's be honest. No getting away from that. 
Ended up missing an absolute sitter here. He got himself at it a little bit. And that stepped up Jang to make a delightful break. The mutterings, they say. Yeah, this was a really good shot, wasn't it? He had to get it, and it was right in the middle of the hole, and that set him up for very nearly a century. But he never looked in trouble in the break. From that moment on, he plays in a very measured fashion. He's not a quick player, but very controlled, very smooth, very composed. Not the sort of player to be easily rattled or intimidated, and that's why he's more than competing with O'Sullivan at the moment. All to play for. It's a best of three from here. Okay, All to Thank play you. for Frank. Yeah, Sullivan Thank reclining in his chair. They're looking relaxed enough from here, but he must be feeling just a little concerned at how well his opponent's playing right now. Breaks of 80 and 97 from Zhang Ander to twice level this match. Make it a best of three frame from here. Replace in the last eight. And a meeting with either Ali Carter or Zhou Yulong, who are only just taking to the table. So that's going to be a potential late night finish stroke early morning on table four Matt Selt has just won against Ricky Walden in a decider having been 3-2 behind he'll play Judd Trump in the quarterfinals Trump having won our first match here on table one tonight 4-2 against Juan Sejuna had a great chance to force a final frame in that one Mr Brown and Trump cleared up to pinch it on the black An easy containing safety shot there, but Ronnie was having none of that. Now Sullivan's pot success was 100% getting about halfway through frame two, but he's dipped quite a lot since then. 87, as you saw. Chang's, on the other hand, outstanding at 94. That last shot Ronnie played there, he didn't have to go for that red. I don't know if he's just decided to swing at a few, but here I think he has to play a safety shot. He wants to attack Zhang, but just sense at the moment that the body language is not great for O'Sullivan. I'm sure he can regroup, but if Zhang gets in again, it'll just add to the frustration. He's three out of three with his long-range pot so far. Well. Never in doubt. He's growing in confidence. At the moment, he's looking the stronger player. Beautifully cued again, right in the centre of the pocket. Two round of 32 appearances last season for Zhang. Just Thanks. missed out on the Crucible for a fourth appearance there. But overall, it was a disappointing season. Seven. Started this one a lot more encouraging. Still only 32.
Got to play a screw shot here to get himself out to a colour. Virtually straight. Not too many shots. 13. Seem to be out of bounds for him, though. He was playing really nicely. This is an awkward one. I'm not sure if this is his sort of shot, though, to drop in blue like this, in this position, to hold for a red. He likes to play a little stun and screw shots. Landed on there. There may be a red that goes through the gap. It must be tied. Yeah, that red doesn't quite go. There is a gap, but it doesn't lead directly to the pocket. Sullivan looking to get back on track here. Having just lost his way a little, perhaps lost some of his composure through frustrations. decision about this shot and Whoa. that was the result he missed it by a margin and he's fluke one goodness me wow how important is that going to be well, it's an outrageous fluke frustration is there i think the other thing i was thinking he's had very little table time actually the last 20 minutes or so it's been all jang a lot of sitting down now he's had an outrageous fluke but now he i suppose he's just got to take it Trying to speed the match up. Even um. that secondary kiss worked out quite nicely, didn't it? Oh, I'll tell you what, I think he'll be having a go at something here. Something seems to have changed in his mind. Oh. oh. On your seven, five, second. <laughs> well, he's fluked the blue, but he's also knocked the white in. So that was a very eventful visit, albeit a brief one from O'Sullivan. Yeah, but it doesn't bode well, does it? He's not happy. He's not a happy man at the moment. I mean, this match is too all, so he's got some breathing space, but he has to gather his thoughts if he's here to win, which I'm sure he is. Somewhere along the lines, he's lost his call a little bit out there. But Zhang has now made a couple of errors, and he would certainly, the way he's been queuing, have expected him to pot that one. He's overcut it. It's a let off for O'Sullivan. The composure he's been showing so far this week in Brentwood has certainly deserted him for the time being. Look at the table now. An absolute feast to be had. Two. at once. You only get to pop one colour though after it. Seven. 
Seven. For uh, Cliff Thorburn, as he to say, if someone needs to put two reds against him, he say, I guess you're in a hurry. Is that how he viewed it? Cliff Eight. really was, as I recall. <laughs> Well, what an opportunity this is. He's already had a couple, Zhang. Uh, Sullivan has, for the time being at least, completely lost his way and his concentration, it seems. But it's vital for Zhang to take advantage of that. 13. Well, the balls are spread out all over the place, aren't they? I mean, they really are. So, there's no obvious reason why he shouldn't. He's missed his ball this frame, which Sullivan couldn't capitalise on. 14. It'd be a big thing for him to win, of course, in Essex against O'Sullivan. So that in itself is a big thing. He nought from three against the Rocket in the past. So that is a sort of a barrier he's got to overcome as well. And the two of those Nancy. meetings that were in the home nations, one of which was here on O'Sullivan's way to the title six years ago, was 4-1. The other was 4-0, Northern Ireland Open the year before. But right now... Seems as though the red mist has descended for O'Sullivan. He's clearly frustrated and he's allowed that to affect his game. Thirty five the lead. Twenty. Twenty-six. This blue, another red, and another colour of highish value should be enough for Zhang to go one up with two to play. Thirty-one. Of course, the other thing to say about Zhang is that uh, he's probably, well, I'm sure he's sensed the fact that his opponent is is a little rattled for whatever reason, and it's not his problem, is it? He's just got to do his thing, and uh, and that's what he's doing. He's remaining in his own little bubble here, and he has played really well tonight. I mean, it, three two is not a win because he's never beaten O'Sullivan, so he's still got to deliver the killer blow in this match, but. Get to three two up, which he's now about to do. He's potted frame ball. That's a good effort, I think. Can't afford almost all of his play tonight. It's always been a strength, his temperament. He's not a player to wear his heart on his sleeve on the table. He's very composed even when things aren't going to plan. O'Sullivan, remember, had that outrageous fluke early in this frame. Thirty eight. Which could have been a real turning point, but quickly went wrong. Is he going to be able to regroup? That's the question. Forty-three. Well, they were certainly all there for Zhang, but you still got to pot them. And once again, he's shown admirable composure. Managed to block out the noise, distractions, the fact that his opponent is clearly rattled at the moment. Oh. He's ignored all that. Zhang under 50. Five. Ronnie O'Sullivan frames Zhang under. The yellow's gone in, but it's academic. Zhang Ander thoroughly deserves to be within a frame of what would be a huge victory for him. And Ronnie O'Sullivan has got a 
reset here, otherwise he's heading out. He trails 3-2. Now, not long ago, Matt Selk came through a really tough match with Ricky Walden. He's been giving his reaction. Getting ever more fascinating this fourth frame. evening of the Bet Victor Run English Open live from a very heavily populated Brentwood Centre. The question is whether Ronnie O'Sullivan can regather the composure that has got him to the round of 16. Certainly seemed to have lost it for a frame and a half there, not least in the previous frame. When he started going for a few pots that were optimistic, had an outrageous fluke but couldn't benefit from it, was previously irked by movement around the arena which of course is inevitable because there are four tables in use and spectators are going in and out but all of that has clearly rattled O'Sullivan the question is whether he can now put that behind him and just focus on trying to win these last two frames because Zhang Ander is playing extremely well he might not get the chance the way Ander's potting Beautiful shot. He did get a hold of the cue ball maybe a fraction too much, so the angle on the black is not great. It's actually worth seeing whether he can pot the black, in fact, because the red and the black are close together. I'm sure Ben Williams will be onto this one. The red conceivably just in front, is it? There's Ben hovering. Just about black first, but not a lot in that. Eight. Of course, simultaneous hit between red and black there would be a foul. We're going to the wire in the match between Ding Zhongwei and Luca Brussel on table two. Three apiece. Winner of that to play either Lu Hong Yu or the man of the moment, Mark Williams. Now the second oldest ranking event winner, having just claimed the British Open at the age of 48. He turns 49 in March. A 
O'Sullivan will be 48 in December. And Zhang will be 33 on Christmas Day. There's an interesting shot, I think. Young Ann is thinking, oh, I just need to keep the safety shots basic at the moment to ensure that, you know, we're just going to see which way Ronnie goes with this. Yeah. He went for a few indiscriminate shots towards the end of the last frame. And that's another one. <coughs> Jang is probably thinking, if I wait long enough, I'm going to get a good chance. So he played that really well, Jang. Played a bit of a nothing shot and let Ronnie just take too big a risk. Now he's sitting down again watching him. One. Bang oh. under one, five, Ronnie O'Sullivan. Well, now, he didn't quite catch the pack fully, although he, he might argue he's a bit unlucky to have gone in off. What's happening? It isn't happening. He missed that one by quite a way. He, he put a bit more into it as well. And of course, he is, every time he misses, he is uh, leaving Zhang back in again. Now, this match has been turned on its head completely from the scoreline of 2 1 to O'Sullivan. A rueful smile. Well, they're underway on table four now in the second match of the night. They've had to wait a long time. Ali Carter against Zhou Yulong, who's taken the first frame. Zhou with a break of 79. Winner of that plays the winner of this tomorrow in the last eight. out of a Sullivan's hands and completely in the grip of Zhang Ander, who's just got to convert this good chance to a match-winning one against an opponent he's never beaten. Chatting to Alan earlier today after his win over Elliot Slessor. He seemed very relaxed, very happy with the way he's queuing. Understandably, Zhang, he's been scoring heavily all week. He's been putting the hard work in on the practice table. He spent the week with Si Jiawei. He's 
in sharing accommodation, eating with Z, practicing with him as well. And at the moment, he's looking likely to go 20. a little better than his good friend and practice partner was able to do earlier. What a chance this is turning into. He's already 24 in front. The red spreading nicely, the black available. One. Twenty six. This is a test of nerve as much as anything now for Zhang Ander. This will be a big deal for him. Last season was a disappointment. 34. Never been inside the world's top 50. He's been around for a long time now. Three times he's fallen off the tour. Each time he's had the tenacity to get back on. 35. He's already scored a couple of notable wins this week. Anthony McGill, Elliot Slesser. But to beat Ronnie O'Sullivan the way O'Sullivan's been playing would be a very, very significant win. Set up just a fourth career quarter-final appearance. He's still got to make it happen, though. 39 in front. Forty. Yes, and... Uh, Forty-one. Again, the Reds are scattered. It's almost been every frame. He's managed to get the balls into... The kind of positions which makes it just about potting balls and getting on the next one. There's no disturbing of the bunch. Playing with a lot of freedom. And if he wants to win, he would thoroughly deserve the win. No one could argue with that. 49. Uh, well, there's just one possible just a shaft of light for O'Sullivan, perhaps, if this shot to pot the black and hold for the red went wrong. I don't think it will, but it's just not absolutely straightforward to play this little shot. Played it pretty well. And now, well, 56. it's just one more pot. One more ball, and it will be a first. First time he's ever beaten the great man. Seven. And it would be completely deserved as well. Good effort, this. The lion's share of this crowd inevitably came to watch what they hoped would be a Ronnie O'Sullivan win, but the local favourite has been well beaten 64. in the end. O'Sullivan just seemed to lose his rag midway through this match, but take nothing away from Zhang Ander. What a cool and composed performance this has been all the way through. Wasn't phased when he twice fell behind. He scored heavily once again. He's taken out frames at one visit. He's looked thoroughly unruffled. And he is delivering some of the best snooker of his career. Ronnie O'Sullivan has just bitten his Q-tip off. 73. had made noises about replacing it in the near future anyway. But tonight is Zhang Anders' night. What a performance. Eighty. So Sullivan rearranging his equipment. 81. And the prize for Zhang, a meeting with either Ali Carter or Zhou Yulong, who are only recently underway, as mentioned. Zhou having taken the first frame, long way to go in that one on table four. 
even though it's now nearly 10 past 11 local time. But I would imagine that Zhang will describe as we see O'Sullivan's now former tip. He would rate this as his best ever performance, given the opponent, given the fact that he's on television, and is matching his best ranking performance. <laughs> to imagine that he's played better than this now. No, he's played beautifully, and he's very well deserved this. Just to say one thing, Ronnie O'Sullivan is due to play in Wuhan at 12.30 UK time on Monday against Ken Doherty. So, uh, travel arrangements will have to be made. It's all on the Discovery Plus next week. And that was the only thing that was missing from Zhang's performance. He's come close to a century a couple of times now. He's made one. His ninth of the season. 105. And he'll believe, given how well he's playing and having just taken out the seven times world champion, that he can go further. He plays like this, he certainly can. 110. He's even got the exhibition shots in his locker and the crowd appreciating the skill that Zhang Ander is showing here. This has been some display. Ronnie O'Sullivan. A big upset on the fourth evening here in Brentwood. The seven times world champion Ronnie O'Sullivan is out at the hands of Zhang Ander, who's played quite brilliantly. The world number 57 has scored heavily and kept his nerve when it mattered to deliver a fantastic performance and victory 4-2.